Hey, y'all. Welcome to our uh, most recent NTXNO Bites with the Beat. If you don't know already, I'm Kevin Cummings, staff writer for NTXNO, and uh, thank you guys for joining us today. Um, if you aren't familiar, if you haven't tuned into our other Bites with the Beat, these are short one-on-one -on -one virtual conversations with local founders, investors, stakeholders, and thought leaders. They're modeled after our core newsletter, The Beat. That's where the name comes from, uh, which is a con con conversational fun look at the people, companies, and ideas that are driving the local ecosystem. Before we meet our guests today, for anyone who doesn't know us and what we do, Inno is a part of a growing network of sites. We're currently in 14 markets and going strong here in our newest one for a little over a year now. Um, we're committed to covering and connecting the local technology, startups, growth, and innovation. We do that through daily stories, a daily newsletter, quarterly events, and more. So check us out at NTX Inno and see what we're all about. Sign up for the daily newsletter, which actually should be coming out right about now. Um, it's the best way to stay plugged into everything that's impacting the local innovation economy. You'll get local tech and startup news, analysis you won't find anywhere else, info on upcoming events and cool job openings, and more, all in a fun conversational manner like this. Um, and real quick, I want to thank our sponsors uh, for whom this event would not be possible. They've stuck with us through these difficult times and helped us pivot to this virtual format. So thank you, Accenture, BDO, UT Dallas, and Thomson Reuters. Check them out. They're here to help you guys as well. Um, so, without further ado, I'd like to uh, introduce Clint Lee, co-founder and CEO of One Day. So, Clint, uh, I guess introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what One Day is. Awesome, Kevin. Thanks for having me. Uh, I'm excited to be here. Uh, One Day is a technology company based in Dallas, Texas, and we have a video platform that senior living communities use to capture and digitally preserve their residents' stories, enhance their marketing capabilities, and ultimately drive occupancy in their communities. Yeah, um, and I meant to mention, uh, if you're tuning in, you are on mute, and uh, if you have any questions that come up while we're going through this, uh, please drop them in the uh, questions box, and uh, we will try to get those at the end. Um, sorry, Clint, uh, one thing I'm always curious about when I like meet people and talk to them is I'm always interested in kind of the origin story behind it. I guess, like, why did you start one day, and kind of how did it come about? Well, so actually, One Day was founded in 2012 by um, my partner, John Boaz, and he had the original idea for One Day, and it was all around helping people tell stories, right? That was the mission of the company, is to spread the power of stories through the best-in-class video platforms. And at, at that point, he was kind enough to bring me on as a co-founder co to help him bring it to life, and, and we've been you know, the traditional startup life of the first few years, kind of figuring out what worked. And then we launched our SaaS platform to the senior living industry in January 2017. And it's it's taken off from there. Yeah. And I guess tell me a little bit about kind of the platform and how it works. Yeah. So it is a it's a video platform and we license it to senior living communities and we train their staff at the communities on how to capture the residents stories through a prompted question and answer kind of life story program that the, we put them through. And then we also have trained their sales reps on how to use video in their sales process to personalize it for prospects to help them move in and drive occupancy. And then really just kind of showcase a day in the life of what's going on in the communities, the amazing programs, the initiatives, the staff, the things that they're doing inside their community and allowing you to share that outside their four walls without a lot of, um, headache of creating a video and what to do with it so it's a it's a full-on program specifically designed for senior living to help them use video to connect and grow their communities yeah and i definitely want to kind of talk about uh, senior living especially now with the pandemic but um kind of before that i think one of the first times i encountered you guys in writing was uh you know in december you guys landed uh, series a and yeah. uh so i imagine kind of going into 2020 you guys had a lot of plans so kind of like what was 2020 looking like for you guys kind of going in and kind of how has that changed in any way uh, because of, you know, this whole pandemic thing? Yeah, um, it's a great question. So we closed our Series A at the end of last year, 2019. We raised uh, 5.3 uh, million from uh, a few VCs led by Silverton out of Austin and then uh, Green Park and Golf in Dallas, their firm that participated as well. And that was really just growth capital to help us expand our team um, and our product to be able to support multiple verticals and, and just scale um, because we were kind of a smaller team at that standpoint. So really to answer your question a little bit briefer, we were gearing up to scale in 2020 and we were going to be launching a, a new product to the funeral home industry already 
And then when the pandemic happened, um, you know, our video platform that senior living communities use to connect and engage with their residents and tell stories became more helpful at a really important time for them. So we started the year licensed in about 2000 communities across the country, and now we're in nearly 5,000. So we've had, you know, we've, a, a lot of growth this year, well over 130% of our customer base. Wow. Yeah, no, uh, that's pretty impressive. Um, and obviously, I'm assuming you guys are uh, working remote right now. <laughs> yeah, we've been remote um, since the beginning of March. Um, as you can imagine, uh, this uh, pandemic's hit the main industry that we serve, senior living, really hard. It's been it's been a tough year for them. So um, we've been virtual. Um, you know, for us, we've always worked with our clients virtually across the country, so it didn't change too much. Um, I think we became a little bit more efficient um, with some things and with all that growth our team's been awesome to kind of answer the call and you know playing even just a small part and helping provide some sense of normalcy um helping connect residents to their family members to tell stories i mean just in the pandemic in the first three months alone uh i think our partners created over a hundred thousand videos with their residents and um it was it was really awesome to see um them at a really tough time uh work hard and be creative and figure out how to keep the residents health and safety first but at the same time you know they had to figure out ways to combat loneliness and isolation in those communities um and you know i think as a entrepreneur and as a small business i mean it's the ultimate goal to create something that really helps someone they need it and um you know we were just fortunate enough to uh our team to really do an awesome job and our clients it's it's unreal to see what they're doing in the senior living industry they don't get enough uh great publicity yeah um, and i guess like you know as a business leader you know how do you kind of manage the you know growth when you guys are you know growth in i think you said your team and also just kind of in the business itself how do you kind of manage that kind of in this new era of you know not really meeting people face to face yeah that's a, a challenge is the simple answer um we've hired 12 people uh this year and we're hiring four more this quarter um to help uh with that growth and the new customers that we've we've gained uh, traction with and uh, i think fortunate for us we had a really strong culture before the pandemic hit um and we've got just a, a team of people who are not only mission driven to what we do, um, but want to do great work and they've got a lot of pride in it. So, I mean, it, they were able to shoulder a lot of that and then we were able to find the right type of people. I think with us being a mission driven company, it does help attract the right type of people to come work for us and be part of our team. And, um, you know, you have to do a ton of video calls, right? The Zoom fatigue that, you know, I think yeah. everyone talks about uh, with new team members, but it, it is unfortunate that we have some team members who have never actually been able to meet other team members uh when you are a small company of about 35 people 40 people um and you're growing as as much as quickly as we are so that's that's always a challenge um and we've just got to make sure that we're aligned and everyone knows what their goal is and what we're driving towards and uh yeah that's that's a that's a long yeah. answer <laughs> Um, and, I mean, uh, talking about what you guys are driving towards, you mentioned that uh, you launched kind of a a new service, uh, I think it was in June, I want to say, might have the date wrong there, but uh, I guess like, tell me kind of about what Reflect is and kind of, I guess you said this was in the works before the pandemic, but I guess like kind of tell us about it and kind of how you see that fitting now with kind of the current situation and everything. For sure. Um, we launched Reflect by one day. And it's a, another video platform that allows, um, we license the funeral homes and families are able to crowdsource uh, a life story, um, even if you're not there from wherever you are of that person and celebrate their life. So um, it kind of becomes like a living memorial, if you will. You're able to, with a click of a button, text 40 people and have them be able to respond to short video, story, memory, condolence, all different types of things and our technology crowdsources those into a really powerful kind of video documentary of that person's life to help them celebrate. And with COVID and everything that happened um, and people not being able to meet for funerals, you know, it's definitely uh, an opportunity for people to still celebrate um, 
you know, the life of somebody and also um, send condolences when you can't be there. Uh, and so we're, we're in the early, like you said, uh, early parts, we launched it mid year this year um, and, and just getting it out the door and uh, it's being well received. We're, uh, we're, we're growing in that area as well and uh, hiring a, a client success rep to help us uh, manage the new accounts that we're bringing on in that space. Yeah, and I'm, I'm kind of curious, you know, operating in that space, like, do, is it kind of hard to, I guess, like, how do you kind of market a product that, you know, kind of inherently is dealing with, like, death? And I guess, like, do you find it, like, emotionally heavy at all? I mean, my aunt works at a uh, funeral home, and she has the weirdest sense of humor I've ever met. But I guess, like, how, how do you kind of go about that, you know, as a business and personally? Do you find that difficult at all? Well, I, I think for us... Um... You know, like I said, our mission is to spread the power of stories um, with the best in class video platforms. And what I think we focus on is that we build technology that helps connect people in unique ways. All of our video platforms do, and they help tell stories. And so we want to really celebrate um, that life. And that may not happen, you know, dear, before the funeral. It may happen a month after, right, where you're able to really get some of the best stories of someone from everyone that interacted with them from coworkers to family members to friends to high school friends um so really it's it's more of the focus on uh the celebration and understanding somebody's story and that that story matters and that that actually can um help people out during a really tough time so i would say that's how we focus and talk about it with our customers and and we're still learning because we're new to the space so um you know i i think we're we're just getting started uh, with Reflect, and uh, we're we're learning quicker each week. Yeah, I mean, I think especially, obviously, you know, we're still like not even a year into the pandemic, but I think a lot of people have kind of learned how to incorporate technology just as a part of you know everyday kind of things that come about. You know, uh, and I'm I'm curious. Sorry, go ahead. No, it's, it's definitely been expedited, right? And um, some industries and how they use technology and, and uh, yeah. Yeah, well, I, I guess going off of that, what about like your industry? Has there been like, do you guys see any kind of changes or trends that are kind of coming out of this? Yeah, in, in senior living, it's it's been really tough for that industry, um, as, as I'm sure everyone's read. Um, occupancy rates are down also because uh, not as many people are moving into some of the communities, right? And then, you know, they still have, um, not to mention just the peace of mind they need to provide to the residents' family members that live there, um, that the things that they're doing to keep them safe um, and keeping them engaged and connected with their family members when they can't visit. But they also still have, you know, a business to run and still have to get people to move in to a place that they, they a lot of the times they can't visit, they can't go see. And so there's a lot of challenges. So, um, you know, there's a lot of things they're dealing with, um, mainly on the healthcare side, but just from an engagement standpoint where, where kind of we are on that marketing side of the business that we see is they're having to find ways to virtually connect with their prospects, with family members who can't come visit. And, and fortunately, our, our platform, that's what we've always done is help people tell stories for virtual connections. Um, so, you know, we're, we're one of the platforms that people are using in that engagement factor and the others are more healthcare related and things to help them combat loneliness and isolation. And um, I think it, I wouldn't call it a technology revolution in the industry by any means, because they were already using technology, but I definitely think it expedited the day-to-day -day use and the frequency in which they use these pieces of technology and what they leaned on them for. They're having to use it for company training and, and new employees because there is, you know, a decent amount of turnover in that industry. So how do you train new people, um, best practices and everything, especially given everything you have to go through now on the, the side during a pandemic? Right. Um, and I'm kind of curious, like when you guys are, I guess, how do you design, you know, software and technology for seniors who are not you know, maybe historically known for being the most technologically savvy, I guess, like, how do you kind of design that? Um, and I guess like what is kind of your thinking process through, you know, creating technology for seniors? Yeah, I, I, I it's a great question. I don't, I don't think honestly it's much different than 
creating technology for other types of people in the sense of it has to be easy to use. I mean, regardless of who you're building technology for, user experience has got to be there. Um, and it has to solve um, problems that are important to them, right? And it has to make their life easier. And if you do that and it's easy to use and you're solving problems that um, help them live their day to day more efficiently or um, enjoy it, they'll, they'll use your technology. And a lot of the times in our technology, we it is the staff members at the communities using it um, and having conversations with the residents. That way it's kind of a, a conversation when they're telling a story. Um, and so long story short, uh, a, a lot of testing, um, a, a lot of feedback from our users. Now that we're in almost 5,000 communities uh, and they're, they're using it day in and day out and have a bunch of people at the communities using at each one of them, uh, we're able to get, gather that feedback and, and make our product better. And we've got some uh, an actual uh, one day, as it's we're calling it Sales Plus, that's going to be launching um, really soon for the senior living space. So our products, um, we've we've definitely reinvented it, and we'll be launching it early next year. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, I guess going off of that, uh, I did want to ask, like, kind of what are kind of some of the future plans for one day? I guess you know, like for the next year or even beyond that. I guess like where do you kind of see? one day growing or kind of any areas that you're looking at, uh, you know, expanding into? Definitely. Um, I, we are a SaaS company and we have a video platform that makes it easy for people to create video content to tell a story. And in senior living, what we've done is we've helped them use video in their sales process to drive occupancy. And we've realized that there's a, a couple of different um, verticals where that could be helpful. And so we, we are going to be expanding markets um, in 2021 uh, outside of just senior living in the funeral home industry. And, you know, the core and mission of what we do of helping spread the power of stories stays the same. We just are going to have a few other video platforms. So we will be aggressively expanding um, and growing next year with a, a few new products. So we're excited. Yeah. And I mean, I've been kind of wondering this this whole time. You, you're talking about like the questions, I guess, just like. Can you give me like a few examples of kind of like what you're trying to kind of get out of these questions? I guess like what are what are you trying to create as a whole like for out of this? Um, when you say the questions, um, could you elaborate what you mean by that? What are we trying to get out of the whole from the senior living yeah. side or as a company? Yeah, like, uh, you said like the the technology kind of you know prompts questions for the seniors oh. to answer on the videos, and I guess like kind of big picture like what do you hope to kind of create through that? Okay, yeah, that's um, so in senior living, um, part of our product is a prompted question and answer. It comes with preloaded stories, and those stories can be, you know, anything about childhood, wartime, life experience, um, career, um, having children. Um, really, what we've realized is, um, you know, there's only a you know a couple handfuls of major life events that really shape someone's story, and our job is to help. Um, facilitate a conversation at these communities with um, an activities coordinator, someone that works at the community and help them get to know the residents so that they can provide a more personalized resident experience. But over time, by just asking a couple questions, you know, they press create movie and in instantly it creates a nice, beautiful branded video, a life story video that's text and email to the residents' loved ones so that they can keep it um, as, a, as a keepsake. But what happens over time is, you know, the average person will stay at a community for a couple of years, they're able to tell their full life story by just having a few five to 10 minute interactions over time through activity or programming or just uh, impromptu on the fly. So our hopes with it is to help capture as many of these amazing stories of these residents as possible because they're unbelievable. Because I think it would be really cool and the ripple effect that can have in 40 or 50 years when there's a lot of people getting to know their great grandparents in ways that, you know, I didn't get to know mine in that way, right? And technology affords us that opportunity to be able to do that. And so we just try to provide a video platform to take the head out, headache out of it and then a program to help guide the staff members and help them formulate those connections with the, the residents. Yeah. And I guess kind of going off of that, one thing I'm always curious about is, you know, making money growing the business is obviously important um but like on a personal level like what is kind of the impact that you hope to make through the work that you do absolutely um i mean i i think we are uh, 
just trying to make sure that people realize how important their story is and to make sure that people are capturing them. Um, you know, uh, our, our founder, you know, the founder, John Boaz, you know, he's always told me that, um, you know, your story may only matter to three or four people, but it could be the most important story they've ever heard. Right. And I think, um, there's, there's a lot of truth to that. And, um, I think if we can build technology that connects people, uh, in unique ways and helps them tell stories, then that's, that's awesome. And if we can build a business and, and a culture that people love coming to work for, um, that that's great. Yeah, I guess like you were saying, you know, there's like those few life events that kind of shape you. I guess there's also kind of those stories that you hear, people that you meet that kind of end up having that impact on your life as well. Absolutely. Very much so. So um, it, it we're, we're fortunate enough that we launched a, an easy to use product to an industry that took it and ran with it and has um, really turned into something awesome. And, and one day has been, you know, one of the fastest growing technology companies in senior living the past four years and um i think we're just getting started in some of these other markets and and it's amazing to see what our team is kind of taking and running with um it's been great yeah and kind of you know you're talking about being like a mission-driven company and you know having that growing team i guess like how do you kind of see yourself as a leader like how do you embody that and i guess like how do you see your leadership style kind of embodying that mission that you you want to instill um so the simple question is is i'm hiring people that are a lot smarter than i am that have a lot more experience and bringing on some really awesome people we've brought on um a chief revenue officer um uh, a vp of finance uh, we just hired a vp of client success we're hiring a vp of product. a few other long story short a few other executives that are are mission driven but have experience scaling SaaS companies and and I think what's great about that is as a leader, you, you kind of end up working for your team, right? My job is to ask a lot of questions and and make sure they have what they need to be successful and make sure that we have a clear path and vision on where we're going. And um and I that's that's working out well. And I think um, you know, we're gonna continue to look for people who uh the startup life is something they enjoy because it's not for everybody and um you know that our mission resonates with them but you know i would say that's that's kind of how i've uh, approached that leadership standpoint you know both both of my parents were entrepreneurs and serial entrepreneurs in senior healthcare also and you know they they always they were really smart but this is them saying this they would always say they were successful not because they were the smartest person in the room but because they were in an industry that could outcare their competition and i feel like that's something that we you know I, I will always remember, and that's something we try to take in one day in a technology company and put it into our culture. And, you know, with that rapid growth and hiring a bunch of new people and being all virtual, it's, it's something you have to continually look at and be very intentional with um, because it's like a diet. You know, you can be doing really well for a little while, and then there's a lot of big decisions being made on a regular basis as you're expanding to other verticals and building products and scaling out and these things. And so, um, you know, you just have to um, know you're not going to be perfect. You're going to make mistakes, but um, try to not make mis the same mistake twice and and try to be really honest and transparent with your team and the way that you're going. And um, I I've been fortunate enough to work with great people um, and the it's, it's awesome to see them take this and build upon it and the culture that they're creating and the impact they're having. Yeah. And I guess some of those things that, you know, you're talking about in your style, like, do you see those as has anything changed because of the pandemic or do you see that as almost like doubly important now? Um, I, I would say it's, it's definitely just as important, if not more, because you're virtual and you don't get to see each other. So um, you've got to find ways to try to stay connected with people that you may not work with on a regular basis that are in different departments. Um, but I think I, I've just seen, uh, I, I don't, I don't think that, um, it's changed though, and it too much from the sense other than um, we've we've hired a lot and grown a lot, so we're trying to figure out how to handle that growth. But um, it, yeah, so I, I think when we do get back to the office or whenever that is, and whatever the new you know working out of an office is, um, whenever that is, it'll be great to see people. I'm an extrovert, so me personally, I love 
going into office and seeing and, and working with people, but um, I've also learned what we do well virtually and how much more efficient we can be in certain things, and it's been great to see. Yeah, um, I'm looking at the time here, and it looks like we're starting to run out, so I wanted to uh, look at any of the questions that we got submitted here. Um, looks like we got one. Um, who owns the data contained on the videos? Um, and yeah, I guess first off, who owns the data that's contained on the videos? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so our uh, our families, we we don't own them. We they just license the technology from us and um, the the families and the communities on the the content they create. Yeah, and I guess like, are there any kind of concerns about like confidentiality? I mean, especially these days, a lot of people are concerned with you know cybersecurity and stuff like that. Yeah, no, it's a great question. Security is definitely something. Um, being somebody's storytelling partner is not something you know we you can take lightly um, in these communities. So we we do um, the industry standard stuff that we need to make sure that um, it meets the community's uh, confidentiality and privacy needs in the community. So um, a lot of these stories are just private for the families to have, and then some of them, you know, the communities will create content and get permission from them to share if they want to. But they're not. Um, we, they 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 own them, so they we did, we're just the vehicle for them to create the content. Yeah, that was one of the follow ups. Was basically like if the the senior facility is going to use it, so they would get permission from from the family. Correct. That totally makes sense. Well, it looks like uh, those are all the questions that we have, but we still have a little bit of time here. So I told you we uh, throw some gotcha questions here at the end. I think oh, we asked this at our uh, last bites with the beat, um, keeping it a little light. Um, so. Uh, you know, basically everybody's got this thing that they're doing uh, because of the pandemic. Right now I've got a garden that still has one plant that hasn't died and uh, apparently I've started to do puzzles now. So what is your uh, new pandemic hobby that you have found? Oh, and oh, so I, mine may be a little bit of a different answer, boring, but I had a kid during um, quarantine. Uh, I had uh, my second child, had my first daughter um, in March. So she's seven months now. Um, so I've been adapting to the, the two kid life and a growing startup, but, um, I, as far as a hobby, I don't, I don't know if I've, 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 I would say I've barbecued a little bit more cause I've been home. I I'm not, I'm still not good at it. Um, but I, I'm, I'm trying to get better at it and I like to, um, cause it's something I, I do enjoy. Um, I really like eating. So, um, that's, uh, that's one of them, uh, but other than that, you know, I've I've just been able to spend a lot of time at home with the, uh, especially the first you know five or six months that I was working from home, um, it, it was it was great to be there every day and see. Um, so that was kind of an added benefit of of being at home for sure. That's a yeah, great I think, question. I think with a seven month old, you know, you're, it's kind of forgiven that you don't have time for uh, yeah, a seven month old. So we're <laughs> our, our house is madness right now um, with uh, with that. Yeah. We, we did get one more question here. Um, what has the response been from customers using uh, videos in their sales process? Uh, it's been fantastic. I mean, I think uh, specifically to senior living in that sales process, you know, the prospect wants to see if it's, you know, their mom and dad who's moving to your community or if it's the person that's actually going to be moving in. They want to see that you genuinely care about them, right? And that um, it's the right place to be. And so them using video, especially in an authentic way, but still in a way that's up to their brand standards and looks professional, um, has helped them foster meaningful connections faster in certain areas. Um, and it's helped drive move-ins, which um, for them, they're able to see how to use video and how it's impacted their occupancy rates and the move-ins that it is. And there's a direct um, ROI to using video in ways. And just like, you know, um, video, we're not naive enough to think someone sending a video is the reason they're going to move in. It's just really um, a vehicle to help them tell their story to connect with their customer. And and that's a, a big, um, it's been a big value add for them for sure. Yeah. Well, I, these things always go by pretty quickly. I'm getting the message that we're uh, out of time here. So Clint, thank you so much for uh, joining us and everyone tuning in. Thank you guys for tuning in. And uh, Again, thank you to our uh, founding sponsors, Accenture, UT Dallas, Thomson Reuters, and BDO. Uh, again, please sign up for the beat. Uh, you can do that at ntxino.com. Thank you guys, and everyone have a great day. Awesome. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks for having me, man. Bye.